Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be installing the Hellwig Sway Bar Kit on my 2019 GMC Canyon. So this is a sway bar kit for the rear end of the 2015 to 2020 Chevy Colorados and GMC Canyons. Included in the kit is all the hardware you're going to need for the entire installation. It does include some installation instructions as well. Let's walk through some of the hardware we've got on the table here. In the far back, we've got some D bushings and saddle brackets, and then they call these U-plates. This is what is gonna bolt the sway bar itself onto the axle. You also use a set of U-bolts with uh, locking nuts and jam nuts and a pair of washers for each U-bolt to bolt it to the axle. To the back right, those are the frame brackets that you'll use to attach the sway bar end links to. There's two pieces to those brackets. There's the underside bracket that has a clevis that goes like this underneath the bracket and hangs down and the end link gets installed in here. And then there's the top part that goes over the top of the frame along with some two hefty bolts and washers and locking nuts as well. These are just some collar clamps that will keep the D bushings from sliding on these shoulders. We'll install those probably last. And then down here are the end links. So they are a two piece end link with adjustability for length. They do include a jam nut, can lock these into place once you have them adjusted. There's a couple of saddle bushings for each eyelet on the end links along with a metal sleeve. And then there's also the bolts and washers and locking nuts for each eyelet. They do include two tubes of lithium grease to lube up the eyelets for these bushings and probably for those D bushings back there. So let's dig into this insulation and see what's involved. One of the first things you're gonna to need to do is lower the spare tire out of the way underneath the truck and set it aside. Then you're also gonna to need to remove the heat shield for the muffler, which is installed right here. Just to give yourself some more room, you'll reinstall it later. It's just held in with three pins. It's not really difficult. This is the area we're gonna be working in on the truck. You do not need to jack the vehicle up to install the sway bar. Actually, you need the weight of the vehicle to be on the ground, as you see here. One of the first steps is installing the D bushings onto the shoulders of the sway bar and using the included lubricant, just go ahead and apply some inside and spread it around just like that. I'm gonna do both at the same time. And there's two shoulders to the sway bar. There's this one here, which is a little narrower, and then there's this one here, which is a little wider. This is the way it needs to be oriented. This narrow section goes on the passenger side and the wider section goes on the driver's side. The next step is actually hanging the sway bar on the axle. So this is the driver's side of the axle pictured. I'm taking one of the U-bolts and I'm inserting it over to this section of the axle and I'm just gonna let it hang there for a minute. Now make sure you don't accidentally crimp any of these lines going around the axle. You need to make sure this U-bolt is making good contact with the axle and only the axle itself. So we've got that one on the driver's side, then we have this one on the passenger side. When I first installed this, I put the U-bolt in the wrong spot and didn't realize it till later. Make sure you put it on the right side of that axle breather. So the way all this hardware works is you've got these U-plates and then also these saddle brackets. The U-plate is gonna go to the U-bolt just like this up against the axle. Then the saddle bracket is going to encompass that D bushing that is on the sway bar itself. And then you're gonna clamp these all together like so and then bolt your two nuts and washers here. Now that you've loosely got the U-bolts attached with the nuts, you can start to loosely tighten those up just so that you're making contact with the axle on the U-plate. And then eventually you also need to install these jam nuts on the bottom of these U-bolts as well. And you kind of want to have the U-plate attached at kind of like an angle because it needs it can't be just sitting straight down. It needs to come back like a little bit of an angle here. And just for now, get these kind of hand tightened because we are going to need to adjust them later. One other thing, this U-bolt needs to go to the right side of that axle vent. I originally had it installed over here on the left side, but I looked at the pictures again and it looks like it needs to go to the right of that vent on the passenger side. Otherwise you won't get the spacing correct. In this next part, we're going to attach the sway bar bracket to the frame. So this is the bottom part of the bracket and then this is the top part of the bracket that hangs on the 
on the frame. So you're gonna bolt this on top of the frame, this goes under the frame. And the way you determine the location is by getting the sway bar parallel to the ground. I'm just using a jack stand on the other side to hold this parallel. And then from here, you're gonna follow this line straight up to the frame, and that's where you're gonna hang these brackets from. And it's very important, the orientation of these brackets. This little cutoff edge needs to go forward facing in the vehicle and towards the inside of the frame. So I'm working on the driver's side right now. This is the driver's side bracket. This is towards the inside of the frame, and it's pointing forward and it's just going to go up underneath like so. So you take that frame bracket, set it over the top of your frame and drape the bolts down like so. You'll need to move the wheel well liner out of the way and trim it back so that the bolt on the outside of the frame will fit. You can just push it out of the way and then trim it with a pair of sharp scissors. Then I'm going to take the bracket on the other side on the bottom side of the frame and tighten the hardware. The next step in this process is assembling the end links like you see here. And then you're gonna be taking each of the hourglass shaped rubber bushings and metal sleeves and inserting them into each of these eyelets using the supplied grease. And they're kind of tough, but you can do it by hand. And just repeat that process on all four eyelets. Next, you're going to take the metal sleeves, lube them up, and then insert them into the middle of the rubber bushings on all four eyelets as well. And I just forgot to record this, but what I did was I lubed up the metal bushing and then I used my vise here to press it in. Next, you're going to take the rest of the hardware and bolt the end link in place. Now, the way the end link goes, this straight part needs to go in the top clevis, and then this part with the angle needs to be offset towards the driver's side. And we'll do the same thing on the passenger side. The straight part goes up into the clevis. And then the offset, again, goes towards the driver's side. So when I say the offset goes towards the driver's side, just like you see here, this is offset towards the left, and then this one's also offset to the left. In the previous clips of me bolting on the end links, I actually put the bolts in backwards. They need to be oriented with the heads facing towards the inside of the truck, and the nuts need to go towards the outside of the truck. The directions specifically call this out for some reason. Now there's two holes on the sway bar. The outermost hole that you see is attached now is the normal setting, and then the, the hole towards the right is the, I guess you'd call it the sport setting. They say start with the normal setting, see how you like how the vehicle drives. Then you could always change it to that second setting if you want later. Make any adjustments to the bar left and right if you need to before you tighten down these two U-bolts. And then once you have that thing centered, then you can start adjusting the end links. You wanna make sure the bar is parallel with the ground. So you may need to take this on and off and twist it up or twist it down a couple of times to get it adjusted. So make sure you get both sides adjusted to the same length and that they're also going perfectly up and down. You don't want them to be at an angle. Once you have that, you can start tightening your U-bolts on the axle and then the bolts on the end links themselves. And once you have the end links torqued top and bottom, don't forget to tighten down the jam nut and don't forget to install the jam nuts on the U-bolts. The last step is attaching these collar clamps to the inside of the debushing bracket on the sway bar on both sides. So we have one on this side and then one on this side.
Once you have everything tightened up, you can go ahead and reinstall your spare tire and the heat shield for the exhaust. Plenty of clearance around the shock, around the spare tire, around the leaf spring. Here's the passenger side. Plenty of clearance around the leaf spring and the exhaust. So the only thing left to do is to take it for a drive and make adjustments as needed. Make sure you check the torque on these every couple thousand miles to make sure they're staying tight. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned for more videos. Later.